You wake up Friday morning after Thanksgiving, and you can barely keep your eyes open, even though you slept nine hours. Ever wonder why that massive holiday meal doesn't just fill you up, but actually knocks you sideways for the entire weekend? Today, I'll explain how Thanksgiving food affects your body like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand exactly which foods create that awful crash, and how to build a plate that keeps you satisfied without turning you into a couch zombie. Most people think the turkey makes them tired. That's the big myth everyone repeats every single year. Turkey has tryptophan, sure, but chicken has the same amount. So does cheese. You don't pass out after eating a grilled cheese sandwich. The real culprit isn't the turkey at all. It's everything piled around it. Stuffing soaked in butter. Dinner rolls with more butter. Sweet potato casserole with marshmallows on top. Mashed potatoes whipped with cream. That's not a meal. That's a carb avalanche with a side of protein. Here's what actually happens inside your body. When you eat a plate dominated by carbs and sugar, your blood glucose spikes fast. Your pancreas dumps insulin into your bloodstream to handle it. That insulin pushes the sugar into your cells for energy. But when there's too much sugar all at once, your body overcompensates. It crashes your blood sugar down too far. And that crash makes you feel exhausted, foggy, and weirdly hungry again two hours later. This is the glucose spike and crash cycle. Thanksgiving dinner is basically designed to trigger it. Now here's where it gets interesting. You don't have to skip Thanksgiving or eat plain lettuce to avoid the crash. You just need to understand which foods slam your metabolism and which ones keep it steady. Turkey is actually perfect. It's high in protein and fat, which digest slowly and keep your blood sugar stable. The problem is, most people treat turkey like a side dish and treat carbs like the main event. A typical Thanksgiving plate is maybe 20% turkey and 80% stuff that spikes your glucose. Flip that ratio and suddenly your body handles the meal completely differently. Let's talk about the worst offenders, starting with stuffing. It's bread cubes soaked in butter and broth. Your body breaks it down into sugar almost immediately. Dinner rolls do the same thing. They hit your bloodstream like rocket fuel. Sweet potato casserole sounds healthy because sweet potatoes are vegetables. But then someone adds brown sugar, butter, and marshmallow. Now it's basically dessert pretending to be a side dish. One serving can contain over 40 grams of sugar. That's more than a can of soda. Mashed potatoes are another trap. White potatoes are high glycemic on their own. Mash them up so your body doesn't even have to break them down. Add cream and butter and you've created a glucose bomb. Cranberry sauce is just sugar with a cranberry flavor. Most recipes use more sugar than actual cranberries. But here's a surprising swap you might not know about. There are simple alternatives that taste almost identical, but don't wreck your metabolism. Start with your plate strategy. Fill half your plate with turkey, not a sad little slice. A real portion the size of your palm or bigger. Protein keeps you full longer and doesn't spike your blood sugar at all. Then add vegetables that actually look like vegetables. Roasted Brussels sprouts with olive oil and garlic. Green beans that aren't drowning in cream soup. Roasted carrots with herbs. These have fiber, which slows down digestion and keeps your blood sugar steady. If you want potatoes, choose roasted over mashed. Roasting keeps the potato intact, so your body has to work to break it down. That extra work means slower digestion and a lentiler blood sugar curve. Here's what most people don't realize about vegetables at Thanksgiving. The difference between roasted Brussels sprouts and green bean casserole isn't just calories. It's how your body processes them. Roasted vegetables keep their fiber structure intact. That fiber acts like a net that catches sugar and slows its absorption. Green bean casserole has cream of mushroom soup and fried onions on top. Those additions strip away the benefits of the green beans underneath. You're essentially eating a vehicle for cream and fried carbs. The green beans become an afterthought. Same vegetable, completely different metabolic outcome. Now check this out. You can still have stuffing. You can still have a roll. You can still have pie. But the order and portion size matter more than you think. Eat your protein and vegetables first. This puts fiber and protein in your stomach before the carbs arrive. When the carbs finally show up, they digest slower because they're mixed with everything else. Your blood sugar rises gently instead of spiking. You stay full longer. You don't crash. And weirdly, you enjoy the meal more because you're not in a food coma by dessert. Let's talk about dessert strategy because this is where most people totally lose the plot. Pie after a massive carb-heavy meal is like throwing gasoline on a fire. Your blood sugar is already high. Your insulin is already working overtime. Then you add another huge dose of sugar and refined flour. 
your pancreas has to release even more insulin. This creates an extreme crash that can last hours. But if you've built a protein-forward plate, your body is in a completely different state by pie time. You've got stable blood sugar. Your digestion is humming along steadily. One slice of pie won't wreck you. The key is not eating pie on top of a mountain of stuffing and rolls and casserole. Some people even wait an hour after dinner for dessert. This gives your body time to process the main meal first. Your insulin levels stabilize. Then dessert becomes its own small event instead of the final straw. Here's what this means for your actual Thanksgiving. You don't have to be the weird person who brings their own food or lectures everyone about glycemic index. You just build your plate differently. Heavy on turkey. Lots of roasted or steamed vegetables. A reasonable portion of one or two carb sides instead of all six. And you eat in order. Protein and veggies first, carb second. Dessert last if you even want it. Most people who do this say they feel weirdly satisfied after Thanksgiving. Instead of destroyed, they don't need to unbutton their pants. They don't fall asleep on the couch at 3 in the afternoon. They actually have energy to go for a walk or play with their kids or have a real conversation. This matters to you because Thanksgiving shouldn't be a day you have to recover from like you ran a marathon. Food is supposed to make you feel good. And the wild part is the smart swaps don't require you to give up flavor or tradition. Roasted vegetables taste better than mushy casserole anyway. Turkey is the star of the meal for a reason. When you eat this way, you actually taste your food instead of shoveling it in and immediately regretting it. You enjoy the day more. You sleep better that night. You wake up Friday morning feeling like a normal human instead of a garbage truck. Your family might even notice you're more present during the celebration. Here's another benefit nobody talks about. When you avoid the glucose crash, you don't get the post-meal anxiety and irritability. That cranky feeling three hours after Thanksgiving dinner isn't just fullness. It's your body struggling with blood sugar chaos. Your mood follows your glucose levels more than you realize. Stable blood sugar means stable mood. You're more patient with relatives. You're more likely to enjoy conversations. You're less likely to snap at someone over nothing. The metabolic benefits show up in your behavior and mental state. So here's the recap. Thanksgiving food doesn't make you tired because of turkey. It's the carb and sugar avalanche that spikes your blood sugar and then crashes it hard. Stuffing, rolls, mashed potatoes, sweet potato casserole, and cranberry sauce are the biggest offenders. But you can build a plate that keeps you full and satisfied by loading up on turkey. Choose roasted veggies over casseroles. Pick roasted potatoes instead of mashed. Eat protein first. Simple swaps, same great flavors. Totally different outcome. On the 27th, I'm dropping the next video in this series. It's called the day after effect. I'll explain what your body actually goes through in the 24 hours after eating this meal, how your gut handles it, why you feel the way you feel, and what's happening inside your metabolism while you're binge watching football. It's going to change how you think about holiday eating completely. So here's the real question. If you could redesign Thanksgiving dinner from scratch, knowing what you know now, what's the one traditional dish you'd absolutely keep and what's the one you'd swap out?